with, and that is seeing Black women in our families die um, at young ages from preventable illnesses like heart attack, stroke, uh, cancer, diabetes complications. Um, that pattern repeated itself so many times. Hello, everyone. I am so excited about season two of Onward and Upward with Leslie E. Royal. I'm Leslie and I will be interviewing several exceptional black women who are making a significant difference in their communities. One such outstanding woman is Lisa Payton Kerr, founder, president, and CEO of the Foundation for Black Women's Wellness. Lisa, welcome to season two of Onward and Upward with Leslie E. Royal. Hi, Leslie. I am so grateful to be here with you today. Thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. I am so excited about having you here today. At least I tell you when the Astro team and I started chatting about guests who would be joining us this season, we knew that we wanted a nonprofit that focused on black women's health and wellness. And we're so excited to have you here with us today. Absolutely. I am so happy to be here with you. Um, as we've shared over the last several months, our missions align and our commitment to Black women and their well-being aligns. And I'm so looking forward to our conversation today as we, as we talk about the work of the foundation and why it's so important to me. Oh, yes, I am ready to do so. But before I start asking questions, uh, Lisa, would you like to tell us a little about yourself? Yes, well, as you shared, uh, Leslie, I am the founder, CEO, and president of the Foundation for Black Women's Wellness. Uh, this is work that I've been doing for the last decade or more. Um, I'm a native of Richmond, Virginia, which is where this uh, work unfolded for me, where it all began. I presently live in Wisconsin, where our work has really taken root over the last several years. Um, I'm a mother of five <laughs> um, and uh, have been married for 27 years um, and continue to grow, you know, in my passion for this work. I've been fortunate over my life to be shaped and influenced by powerful Black women in my family and my extended community. And I see this work as an extension of them and all of the wonderful women we continue to work with, to serve and to connect with as we uh, outroll our mission, you know, increasingly every year. Uh, so it's hard work for me and I cannot wait to share more of it with all of your listeners and your guests and to hear from them over the next several months as, as our relationship deepens and grows here at Astro with you and others. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for sharing and telling us about your beautiful family. And we at Astro are so excited about our partnership with your wonderful organization. Yes. Now, what inspired you to create this wonderful foundation? You know, it started from a very personal place for me, Leslie. Uh, for folks who've ever listened to a speech or attended any of our events, uh, they've heard deeply about the experience of my mother and many women in my family who were so central and pivotal in developing me as the woman that I am. Um, and along the way in my life, I've lost so many of those women. Um, the story of the foundation really began with the death of my mother in 2006 at the age of 64 of congestive heart failure. Um, and that was just a life-changing, uh, life-altering moment for me in my life to, to see my mother so full of life, so vibrant, uh, the central pillar, the stabilizing force in our family leave us in a way that I would never have imagined. You know, as we all grow up, we have visions of how our lives will unfold visions of our mothers growing old and, and helping us raise our children and grandchildren, enjoying their later years after they've worked and sacrificed and pushed for so many years, right, to be that stabilizing force in our families. Right. Um, and when she died, it just uh, brought to bear for me 
a reality that I had lived with, that all of us as Black women, if we really sit down and think about it, that we've lived with, and that is seeing Black women in our families die um, at young ages from preventable illnesses like heart attacks, stroke, uh, cancer, diabetes complications. Um, that pattern repeated itself so many times in my family with so many women losing their lives that it was a wake up call to me and it, it propelled me and compelled me to do something about it. Um, and over time, what I did about it was to create this work of the Foundation for Black Women's Wellness to really bring attention uh, to the issue of Black women's health and to really spur a movement for Black women to, to really transform our health as our biggest priority. Uh, and that's where it started for me. Thank you so very much. We, we um, first, um, I thank you for your transparency. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, and um, although you are still grieving your mother, you choose to um, educate us um, on what's important. And African-American women, we care for everyone. <laughs> Yes. We everyone, our our husbands, our children, our friends, our church members, our sorority sisters, and the last person on the list is us, is me. And so thank you so much. And can you um share why do you have such a passion for you know, black women's health? You know, the passion probably also started um, growing up in my mother's hair salon. Uh, you know, any black woman who, who's gone to a hair salon knows the power and the beauty of, of a hair salon and what that means to us, right? That's right. Uh, it, it's a little bit of it's sisterhood, it's communion, it's church, it's a healing balm. It's where we go to literally let our hair down and to really lay our burdens down with, in this space this powerful, beautiful space that's so unique to Black women. You know, the role of our salons in our community is just a pillar, right? It's a pillar. Mm -hmm. And in that um, environment, my mother's salon, which was here downtown Richmond, Virginia, called the Beauty Hut, um, you know, that's I where I, that. right? The Beauty Hut, such yeah. a beautiful, beautiful name for a mm -hmm. tiny little place where I witnessed from, from girlhood until I left for college, just the transformational power of Black women healing with each other. Um, and that intimacy between Black women and holding each other up and propping each other up is also where I witnessed Black women working, toiling, whether they were street sweepers, uh, maids, uh, school teachers, university professors, they all converged in this place. And the common factor was my mom did their hair. Nice. And they all had life challenges and they all had life struggles. And, and they shared that with my mother. And I saw her nurturing them and I saw them nurturing her. And I saw them getting sick, right? And I saw them dying, um, not all of them, but a significant number of them. Um, and it just didn't rest well with me then, and it certainly didn't rest well with me later as I began to get older and see this pattern continue. So I think in answering your question, this deep love, respect, admiration of Black women for all that we are and all that we do, and as you say, the ways that we support everyone else, the way we work, the way we open doors for our families, juxtaposed with this experience of seeing our lives at risk. Um, and, and attending the funerals of Black women whose hair I had just shampooed, who were 37, 42, 47, 52, maybe 60, maybe 60. I'm not talking about elderly women. I'm talking about young, talented, committed, family-oriented, hardworking Black women whose funerals I attended with my mother and eventually my mother's funeral that's what drives my passion. It was just not right to me uh, when my mother passed away and, and her death drew me to my desk where I started writing the list of names of women whose funerals I had attended. You know, so my mother's death brought me to that moment of saying, she's not the only one. There's been so many 
And I started pinning a list of names of women who had left, you know, through, through illness. And when I got to about 40, 50 names, I just dropped the pen. And I said, you know, God has revealed this to me. This has been made clear and plain to me. Now that I'm aware of it, I'm compelled to do something about it. I'm responsible to do something about it for those women and for other women and girls so that we could save lives, spare lives, um, and to change that whole narrative. So my passion rests in, in those places. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, it's amazing that you say that um, when you worked in your mom's beautiful salon, the Beauty Hut, yes. what a wonderful name. And I, I'm certain that it was filled with love. And with you all there, with all of the women that came in, all of her clients that came in day in and day out, we could talk about everything in those salons, right? Absolutely. And you mentioned that. But um, now we're not going into the salons because of COVID and other things. And we're not, we don't have that um, place that we can go to commune, um, to just sit back and tell each other what's going on in our lives. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give to women? Because now we're kind of disconnected. What advice would you give to women um, who um, are looking for answers um, regarding their health? They're, they're facing health challenges and they're looking for answers. If we go to the salon, we can just tell them what's going on with us and they'll say, oh, I know my yeah. sister experienced that. You need to call this doctor. And so what advice would you give to women who are seeking help for their health care challenges? Absolutely. What I tell women is we are more, uh, we have greater access to information online than we have ever had before in the history of mankind. Um, there is no condition that you cannot Google a term and learn something, you know, at least a layperson's level knowledge about your health condition on your computer, on your cell phone, on your smartphone. So we have no excuses to not know, right? We, we've got access at our fingertips, literally. We still have access to our social networks, whether we are joining Zoom calls with our friends or Zooming in with our doctors on our patient portals um, or calling family members to ask, calling up our girlfriends. I still, even as a health uh, advocate and someone who works in a health equity space, I still start with my friends, uh, my girlfriends and my closest confidants before I call my doctor, right? You know, so that I'm prepared and ready when I call my doctor or my healthcare provider. So we've got that. We've also got organizations like the Foundation for Black Women's Wellness. And what we've been very fortunate to be able to do this year after opening a physical space. Uh, yes, yes, right? We, Congratulations. This, thank you. We work very hard in 2019 to do a crowd raising campaign to open a physical space that was exclusively ours. And you can see it projected behind me. It's um, beautiful. Yes, the Black Women's Wellness Center uh, in Dane County, Wisconsin, which is uh, the county where the capital city of Madison in our state, um, as a place where Black women can gather to participate in health education, um, wellness classes, yoga, meditation, all types of fitness, uh, where they can come and commune and get their questions answered, where they can get help signing up for health care if they don't have any, where they can just have access to a wealth of community resources to improve their lives. So we opened this center January 2020 um, and had to turn around and close it in March 2020 because of COVID-19, because we couldn't gather safely. We've been closed uh, since March 29th, 2020, but thankfully with Zoom <laughs> and other online platforms that's enabling us to do this interview right now, we're still able to connect with Black women over 7,000 per year just in our local network of community. Yes. And then online, we're reaching thousands more every day with health promotion, education, preventative, uh, education and awareness. We're hosting online events about heart disease prevention, cancer prevention, financial wellness. Um, and that's just the foundation for Black Women's Wellness. You can tap into us from anywhere, but there's also the National Black Women's Health Imperative, 
which is our flagship national Black women's health advocacy organization. And I'm sure there are similar organizations and communities like Atlanta and elsewhere. Um, if you want the information, it is available to you. Uh, we've got to go out and seek it. One of my, my biggest messages to Black women is we have to commit to being our first line of defense, our greatest advocates, and pursuing the information that we need uh, to protect our bodies, our health, our minds is on us first. Um, and there's tons of tools at our disposal. So be hungry for it. It's out there. Excellent. Thank you so very much. Now, let me ask you, Lisa, what does onward and upward mean to you? <laughs> You know, I love the name of your show and it really resonated with me because I often use the term, uh, the, that term onward and upward a lot. Um, personally, I am a woman uh, and a black woman who really believes in being in charge of our own lives and our destiny. Um, and that's really the spirit of the Foundation for Black Women's Wellness. Uh, folks didn't believe that a, a black woman led organization could make uh, the level of change and influence that we're exerting in this whole space of health equity and really elevating Black women's health to a priority conversation in our local community, in our state, and increasingly nationally. So for me, Onward and Upward personifies what we're all about. We are always elevating. We're always testing limits. We're allowing no one to place boundaries on us. And we're not accepting mediocrity in terms of our health, in terms of how we live. We will not settle for anything uh, less than the best for our well-being as Black women. And we're always moving that conversation onward and upward. We're always elevating our health onward and upward. We're always committed to living our best life onward and upward. So there's just, it has so much meaning for me. Oh. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I love that. Yes. We will not accept anything less than the best when it comes to our health and wellness. Yes. I love all of what you just said, but that indeed. Yes. yes we deserve it. Yes, we, we do. It. And we can have it. And we can have it. We will yes. have it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, Lisa, how um, is your faith your guiding compass? Oh, Leslie, what an important question. Um, you know, faith has been the thing, right, that that has brought us all through. I, I was fortunate to, to grow up in a very small, tight-knit community outside of Richmond, Virginia. Um, and the church was just the central focus of that community. But even more so than the church, this very tight-knit uh, family and community network was the powerful centering agency, right, in our community. And so you're talking about people who were connected by kinship and, and non-kinship ties who were just very close. And the church was like our centralizing place. Um, and the little church that I grew up in was over, it's probably over 200 years old now. It's a very long-standing African-American church in a very historic area um, outside of Richmond where our country's history really unfolded. Um, and faith has been the thing that has kept our families over generations through just the, the whole tide of our racialized history and experience in this country. And as I listen to the stories of my elders, my grandparents, great grandparents, and all the community elders growing up, they made us very aware from a very young age that if not by the grace of God, right? Mm -hmm. And our faith that strengthened us to endure and to continuously choose to overcome, we wouldn't be here today. And I, and I really honor that heritage and that legacy. I'm very consciously aware um, that I sit on the shoulders of giants, of our elders um, and our foremothers and forefathers. And what I'm able to do is really because of what they chose to do um, in maintaining strength and faith through unspeakable circumstances, unspeakable circumstances. And it's so funny that we're talking about this on the heels of uh, Dr. King Day, right? Yeah. Um, and remembering our history um, in that regard. 
we have so much to be grateful for. And faith has really been uh, that piece that has permitted us to persist. Amen to that. Yeah. Well, Lisa, I tell you, I've just enjoyed my conversation with you. You are such an inspiration. You are such a wonderful spirit. And it is just a pleasure, pleasure to have gotten to know you. And I'm looking forward to the viewers seeing and hearing from you. But I want to keep the conversation going. Okay. Well, after this interview is over. So would you be willing to share your websites and social media handles with us? Absolutely. I want to invite everyone tuned in today to visit our website at F fbww.org that stands for Foundation for Black Women's Wellness. Uh, you can also visit us on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Black Women's Wellness Day. Um, and just to tell you a little bit about that history, um, I'm also the founder and host of a long running event called Black Women's Wellness Day that actually preceded the development of our nonprofit organization, the Foundation for Black Women's Wellness. And there are mounds of resources um, and history of our work at that Facebook page. So please visit it. Uh, also join us on Instagram. Our handle is at BWW Day Founder. That's Black Women's Wellness Day Founder. Um, and you'll get a taste of all the work that we do year round um, here in our local community and beyond to promote health and wellness um, and to really also advocate for systems level change with policymakers and with health systems. Um, you've got a broad swath of work that I know women would be very interested in learning about and very inspired by um, as we demonstrate that we can be the change that we desire and that we need in our community. So please join us on social. Um, if you want to follow me personally, uh, you can also visit me on Instagram at, at Lisa Payton Care. It's just my full name spelled out. Um, you can see the spelling in our interview information, I'm sure, and I'd be happy to friend you and to connect online. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so very much for your passion for Black women's health and helping us to be the very best that we can be. If we don't take care of ourselves, we cannot care for our family members. So thank you so, so very much for your time and you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Leslie. Blessings to you. And thank you for this forum that you created to really elevate the voices of women, including me. I really appreciate it. Well, it's my pleasure and blessings to you as well.